Hey guys, welcome back. So now we're jumping back into Venom. And at this point in the series, the number of parts that are moving, they are stacking up and it's getting nuts. And there's a lot that we gotta get into for this one. So we're just gonna hop right in. So first, if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to catch the spills every week. And don't forget to hit that bell up top so we can squat up in the comments for the first hour. All right, so jumping back into this, we start off with Carlton Drake and the Life Foundation. And we talked about prior to this point on how they came back with more funding, which had then led for them to have more resources, as well as the recent dealings with Senator Arthur Crane. To where again, for Carlton Drake, if everything plays out the way that he would like, then the Life Foundation could become the standard of symbiote policy initially for the country, but from there for the rest of the world. But on top of us being shown like parts of the trajectory from where the Life Foundation is now, with them returning, and where Carlton Drake wants to take it, but we also get another closer look into his true intentions, which as we know, lean more into his symbiote obsession. And he goes into this by expressing like, what do we really know about symbiotes? Because as far as he's concerned, the lack of symbiote knowledge, like, that's the issue. And as he goes into this, he points out the initial observation. Because at one point, all that was really known was that they're extraterrestrial and that they're dependent on physiological symbiosis in order to live and thrive, which is more or less how they got the name symbiote. But Carlton Drake then goes on to describe that over time they had learned that this symbiosis had more to do with choice than the organism's physiology. And you can say that we first got this example when Peter initially got the symbiote in the first Secret Wars event, because when it was initially believed to be this high-tech suit that Peter took on for a replacement, but after Peter donned the suit, or symbiote, it could have later just left him for someone else who was either stronger or more powerful, but for as long as the symbiote had the choice, it stuck with Peter. And the next example after that would be like the symbiote choosing Eddie Brock, who at this point, fast forward to now, is like one of many examples that we could go to. But in the case of Eddie, if we go back to Venom Dark Origin from 2008, when we got one of the craziest and probably most violent visuals of Eddie initially getting the symbiote, but I like that back at the time that this gave us a more slowed down and in-depth look at the bonding process between Eddie and the symbiote. Because at the time when the symbiote found him moments before he was about to take his own life, and we saw Eddie see the symbiote's memories from Secret Wars, and it gave us the telling of how the symbiote believed that Spider-Man had tried to kill it by abandoning it and leaving it without a host, which at the time both Eddie and the symbiote saw as the same thing as far as the symbiote being left to die and Eddie being driven to suicide. And it was for that reason at the time that the symbiote bonded to Eddie and stuck with him because albeit though unintentionally, Spider-Man had pushed them both towards the brink of death. But also with the symbiote choosing Eddie, becoming Venom was a process. And over the course of time, as the process of symbiosis brought the two of them closer and closer, this is what eventually had then created Venom. And that transformation through choice and through circumstance is really the bottom line of what Carlton Drake is talking about. And we'll go a bit deeper into the whole transformation part in just a little bit because also Drake mentions that there are other cases to where a symbiote will choose a host, but instead of it becoming a mutual bond with mutual benefits, there have been cases where a symbiote will just take someone's body, lobotomize them, and just keep it moving. Much like what we saw with the sleeper symbiote when it had taken Tel Carr's body back in Venom vs. Host to where from there Sleeper had just taken off into space and did a ton of exploring and learning only to then return to Earth much later only for us to find out that Tel Carr's body didn't hold up too well in there. But for Carlton Drake, he refers to these things loosely really just to give the example that he's learned that symbiotes can make the choice to either cohabitate with a host via symbiosis or they can take what they need much like a parasite. And for Drake, this concept just totally throws on its head like the idea of what a symbiote or as he would say, quote unquote symbiote, could potentially be, because they're ever adapting and ever evolving. So it's like, should they even be called symbiotes? Like, should they be limited to just that name? Because on top of that, Carlton Drake also mentions that in recent years, when Null stepped into the picture, the history of what he then thought he knew about symbiotes, it just got even wilder. Because when he really thought that he knew all there was to know about symbiotes, then their god showed up. And on top of that, there were symbiote dragons. And from there, Drake had learned more about the prior visitations to Earth. And all this new information taught Drake that all he knows about these so-called symbiotes is that he knows very little about them. Because for the longest time, they've only been defined by the function that we were most familiar with, and that being symbiosis. And it's here where we find out that Carlton Drake, his intentions from here forward for symbiotes and more specifically the Venom symbiote is to just poke and provoke the symbiote into evolving so that he can discover how far this evolution will go. And with seeing this, I kind of feel like Carlton Drake, along with some other factors that we'll talk about soon, that together they're going to end up provoking some of these future threats that we've been teased about not too long ago in Venom issue 1. 
and possibly even in a Terminator 2 type fashion where you try to stop the future but you end up making it happen type thing. Because the Terminator references in this series so far are pretty heavy. But then after this when we then jump over to the Venom symbiote we find that he's kind of losing it right now. Because with him seeing Eddie's physical body destroyed and him not being able to reach out to Eddie or sense him anywhere, it truly has him legit believing that Eddie is dead dead. Which by itself has the Venom symbiote feeling like it's lost its home. Or even a part of itself if that makes any sense. But then on top of that, the Venom symbiote kind of goes through the history of where it's been and what it's come to now at this point. And in a lot of ways, he feels like he's been reduced tremendously. Whether it was what he endured when he was captured by Hayes Mancer, or when he originally bonded with Tel Car and made him a Kree super soldier. And on top of that, you have his time with Peter and everything that he's been through with Eddie, which all just bring him to a place now where he's just a dog. And he admits that there's been times where he's thought about leaving Dylan and everything else that's out here to kind of just sort itself out. But every time he gets ready to leave, he thinks about how badly Eddie wanted the best for Dylan. And the Venom symbiote realizes that he's all that Dylan has. And with them sticking around and helping Dylan, it's still kind of a tricky situation because for obvious reasons, Dylan doesn't really trust the Venom symbiote right now. But even with that being the case, he's going to stick around and watch Dylan's back because he knows Eddie would want someone to look out for his son. But also I want to say, like, even though at one part, the Venom symbiote's kind of like, okay, I'm not your father, but I'm all that's left of him. And when I see that, I can't help but go back to like just the thought that the Venom symbiote is kind of a tertiary parent in the whole scope of how Dylan even came about. And really that's one of the things I hope to see touched on a bit more in the future as far as the Venom symbiote literally being family with both Eddie and Dylan because I don't see why that wouldn't be a thing. But then after this, will we pick up with Dylan and Archelau, Eddie's old friend from his reporter days. And it's here where she tells Dylan about how his father had reached out to her out of the blue, letting her know right off the bat that he was going to die in six days. And I'll just say right now, if an old friend called me and said that or left me a message like that, I'd have just hung up or deleted it. <laughs> Sorry, we're all doomed. And then days later when it actually happened, like breaking news, we interrupt this message style. I'd have just been stuck with a face like, yo, he, he wasn't playing. But Arch allowed, she looked into it and likely more so for curiosity's sake. But Eddie dropped her this message predicting his death while also giving her the heads up on this symbiote conspiracy. And initially to her, it kind of sounded like Eddie was tweaking. But then when she looked into the things that Eddie was talking about, a lot of these crazy sounding things checked out. And for her with Eddie actually dying and Dylan showing up at the diner, these things then acted as confirmation for her as well. But as far as the information that Eddie had given her, it was about a shadow organization called the Absent Throne. And when we see the information that she's collected, where she's connected Eddie's intel with a bunch of strong leads, and the conspiracy goes deep. Because not only do we have things here like Arthur Crane stepping into power, as well as what we've seen with the return of the Friends of Humanity, but also what looks to be Lasher's gas station attack from Extreme Carnage, but with how these events connect and affect each other, it's almost as if someone from the future had stepped in and orchestrated much of this. With us seeing now that there were earlier investments going into shell companies for the Life Foundation and insane stock exchanges that later went through the roof that no one could have predicted unless they knew the future. Like the Beyond Corporation being bought at 88 cents a share, then all of a sudden it shoots up over $15. And it's nuts because clearly a lot of the events that we've seen and more, they've all been moving like pieces on a board and as our Archer followed the money, she just found more and more. But then it's here where Archer lets Dylan know that tonight she's following her next lead at a small research facility in Plymouth, which has a good chance of having more intel, but also is small enough for her to get in and out without too much trouble. And right away with hearing this, Dylan tells her like, I'm going with you, because if any more details can be found out about his dad, Dylan wants to be there to see it. And initially Archer tells Dylan that she doesn't think it's such a good idea for Dylan to just go rampaging through this place with a symbiote. So Dylan lets her know it'll just be him and a cat so that they can actually go into this with a stealth approach rather than Dylan going in with the Venom symbiote, which as we've seen before, like <laughs> it's been like a Meek Mill intro every time. <laughs> like anything but quiet. But then also we get this moment to where Dylan is telling the Venom symbiote to kind of hang back and sit this one out, telling him that he only has Sleeper with him and he'll be okay. Because once again, Dylan's having trust issues with the Venom symbiote right now. But when he breaks the news to the Venom symbiote, he just snaps on him. Kind of like, what? You want me to just sit here like a good boy? Fine, go ahead with your scary ass. Yes, I don't care. But then it's also here where Dylan tells him, or he at least begins to tell him, that it's so much more than what he had seen in Dylan's head. Because also for Dylan, every time that he looks at the Venom symbiote, he's hoping to see his dad come through. But then after this, we then jump over to Dylan and Archer, who've made their way to that small research company, Exodynamics. And when they get inside, the stealth op is just working like a dream. And when they go in, Archer tells Dylan to get some data off of the terminals in the next room. But when Dylan goes into the next room, ain't no terminals. But instead, the only thing he finds in there 
is an ambush. And before you know it, Dylan's hit with Tranks, Sleeper's hit with Sonics, and the two of them is apprehended as all get out. But as soon as this happens, Archer Lyle is then approached by Liz Allen, which just shows us right away that Exodynamics Materials Research is owned by Alchemax, which now adds a whole nother player to all of this. And man, like with this happening, Archer Lyle did Dylan dirty. But it's likely that prior to this moment, Archer got pinned in the corner because she found too much and saw too much, and it brought her to the point where she had to make a decision whether it was either her or Dylan and clearly she chose herself and this is a crazy thing to see play out because I'm really curious to see what are the intentions for Liz Allen as far as sleeper because when she mentions we know how to break what we make and from there she goes on to talk about how there's a symbiote arms race coming and it almost sounds like she wants to weaponize sleeper because like we talked about before sleeper was born at Alchemax but with his birth there were complications and Dr. Steven literally saved sleeper's life to where after for a number of weeks sleeper stayed there under observation so if Liz had the intention of getting rid of Sleeper, for whatever reason, it would have been done long ago. But also the thing that has me thinking that Liz wants to weaponize Sleeper is also that she had made an agreement with Eddie shortly after Sleeper was born that she would look after him and study him but not get too invasive. But now that Eddie's quote unquote dead, I think Liz is ready to cross that line and not only do a deeper study on Sleeper, but also reproduce his unique abilities for this arms race that she says is around the corner. So it's going to be pretty interesting to see what the future holds for Sleeper and his further contributions to Alchemax because the list of Sleeper's unique powers are insane because he can go invisible, he can see other objects that are invisible, he can create chemicals for either combustion or corrosion, he can produce a number of pheromones that could tranquilize and the list goes on. So just imagine another symbiote with more malicious intent or anyone else getting their hands on those kind of abilities. Like that's going to be a sight to see if that's where this is going because on top of this also over at the life foundation we see the other side of this arms race because it's here where Carlton Drake shows Mr. Carson who he's been talking to this whole time about the symbiotes getting more powerful and constantly evolving and he shows Mr. Carson this suit that he had made for him because this is the next step in not only combating but also provoking symbiote evolution. So not only with everything going on do we have this arms race between Alchemax and the life foundation but for Carlton Drake with the Life Foundation, he's not going into this because he wants to lead the arms race, but he just wants to escalate this thing through the roof. And I feel a little bad when I say that I kind of want to see him do it. Because at this time with Drake having his sights on the Venom symbiote, and the Venom symbiote truly being alone right now and not in the best place. And it's crazy to say, but with the Venom symbiote's condition right now, it's almost like it's in the perfect place to be broken and transformed. Because with the things going through that symbiote's mind right now, it's almost like he's back in that church with Eddie. But with the Venom symbiote being hurt even more now, there's no telling what he's gonna become next. And so now real quick, I wanna give a special shout out to all the patrons. Thank you guys for all your support. And for anyone who's new here who wants more information on how to support the channel, I got a link below so we can go to patreon.com slash dope spill. But that'll do it for this one, guys. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below and we'll do it again in the next one. All right, later.